finishing up here with chapter 23, and what we're, I'm trying to discuss here is that I'm trying to discuss what the path of a charge will look like in the presence of an electric field. The other day, we were talking about how to draw E fields, so that's a different topic, and then what is the path of a particle in the presence of an E field, okay? So we could see that the force due to an E field is equal to QE. So due to the E field configuration, we can predict what will happen to the charge placed in it. So we see that if the Q is positive, the force experienced is in the same direction as E because it's just positive times E. And then if the Q is negative, then the force experienced by the charge is opposite to E. So if I simply, this, uh, this picture here shows if the velocity is zero. So let's just say uh, the initial velocity of a charge is zero. It's just standing still, and all of a sudden, you turn on an electric field. Somebody turns on an electric field here, boom. It's like turning on the lights. What's going to happen to the charge? Well, if the charge is positive, it's going to start accelerating in that direction linearly, right? Uh, it's going to start accelerating. If the electric field is constant, the acceleration will be constant, and the velocity will be uh, increasing linearly, and so it's going to move that way. If the ch charge is negative, it's going to move this way, okay? So the, if the initial velocity is zero, the path of the charge is uh, basically a straight line in the direction or opposite to the direction of E. So if V initial is zero, then path is a straight line. If Q has a V initial, so now this is the second case, if Q has a V initial perpendicular to uh, E, perpendicular to E, so let's say the charge, the Q is going up, and all of a sudden you turn on the electric field, what will happen to it? In that case, we saw that the V initial is going to stay constant. It's not going to change because the force is going to be to the right. Okay, and the force is going to be QE, which is MA, and the A is going to be QE over M. But since the electric field is only in the X direction, the forces or the accelerations are going to be only in the X direction. That means the VX will get bigger, it's going to grow, but the V initial is going to stay the same. So VX will grow linearly as uh, QE over MTX, QEX over MT. So what I'm showing here is that this is analogous to projectile motion, which you throw something at an angle here, and the v, Vx and Vy, it has a Vx and Vy, and which component of the velocity is affected by the gravitational field? Only the Y component. The X is not affected, right? So. As it goes up, it goes down, the Vy becomes a zero up here. And then as it goes down, the Vy uh, becomes negative, okay? So how could I create a situation with the electric field that will make the path look exactly like this? With this case, the path will go like this, but it will never turn around. It's just going to go like that. But the equation is going to be projectile motion, OK? How can I create this kind of situation? Can you think of it? Tell me like the E-field configuration that I would need, and which direction would I need to throw the charge? So the E-field goes down. That's equivalent to the gravitational field going down. And then throw the charge uh, at an angle, right? If I just throw the charge, if I have a positive charge, if I throw it this way, then I create the equivalent of free fall, throwing up and down. It's going to go, it's gonna go up, uh, up, 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 slow down, slow down. It's going to reach zero, then go down. So that one is going to be the equivalent of one-dimensional free fall. And then if I throw it at uh, 90 degrees like this, it's going to go like this. 
So it's going to be equivalent to projectile motion where you throw something from the top of a building at horizontal and it goes down, okay? And if I throw it at an angle, then it'll be exactly like a full-fledged full projectile motion like that. So I could throw it either which way. I could throw it up. It'll be like, uh, it'll be like free fall. Horizontal, it'll go down. And then at an angle, it'll go like that. Now, if the charge is negative, then something will happen that doesn't happen for gravity, right? If the charge is uh, negative and you throw up, yeah, it just keeps going up. So the equivalent doesn't exist in gravity. You throw, so you throw up, ooh, it just keeps going up because it likes to go towards the direction where E field is coming from, right? The force is up. So that one will just keep going up. If you throw this way, it's going to go like this if the charge is negative. So you see that case doesn't exist for gravity because gravity is always down. So, and then if you throw this way, it's going to go like that if the charge is negative. So what we're learning is that uh, uh, the charge, the path of the charge is similar to the projectile motion for gravity, but if the charge is negative and the E field is down, then you get the opposite uh, mirror image of that. See, this is, the, this is the mirror image of that, and then uh, this one is the mirror image of that. As a matter of fact, if you think of it, they're inverse functions, right? You learn about inverse functions. You go like this, and then you go like that, and then they cross at that point. No, yeah, you're, you're, that's a good question. He's saying, do we need to consider the force of gravity? In most cases, no. Because the force of gravity, and if the charge is, let's say, an electron or something, the force of gravity is going to be a lot weaker on the electron than it is the, than the force of electricity on the electron. So the force of gravity has no meaning for the electron. So gravity only takes over for bigger things, book, ball, or something like that, you know. But for electron charges, the force of electricity will take over.